Susanna. The Iraqi Air Force lacked reconnaissance photographs of the loading terminals in the Persian Gulf. The General Military Intelligence Director of Iraq proposed sending a Dassault Falcon 50 business jet to secretly observe the area and take photos. The Iraqi Air Force supported the move, and at the beginning of 1986, they sent the plane to Amman, the capital of Jordan, so it could then go to Mumbai under the guise of carrying wealthy Iraqi businessmen. In reality, the plane transported three Dassault Mirage pilots and a photographer. The plane was flown next to Syria under the excuse of an accidental navigation error so that aerial photographs could be collected. Major General Shaban decided he wanted to deploy the same aircraft to the lower Persian Gulf for anti-shipping operations after looking at the report of the secret mission. The Dassault Falcon 50 was sent to Villaroche in France for modifications. The fire control system and Cyrano 4 C5 radar of the Mirage F1 were installed, along with cockpit modifications on the right side. Externally, the plane had a missile launcher installed under each wing, and the nose replaced with that of the Mirage F1. In some respects, the civilian private plane had been updated into a French fighter. After testing, it entered service under the Iraqi Air Force as an Air Force Falcon 50 YI-ALE, nicknamed Susanna. Susanna was sent to the Persian Gulf carrying two Exocet missiles on May 17, 1987. The aircraft was escorted by two MiG-23s and two MiG-25s. It was during this mission that the pilot would make a terrible mistake. Seth Stark was assigned to the coast of Saudi Arabia, near the Iran-Iraq exclusion boundary, to monitor the situation as a patrol ship. Followed by its MiG escorts, Susanna flew north of Bahrain, where it ran into the USS Stark, and the decision was made to attack the frigate. Before the attack was launched, and unaware of the Iraqi plans, Captain Brindle had his radio man contact the plane, quote, Unknown aircraft, this is U.S. Navy warship on your 078 degrees for 12 miles. Request to identify yourself. The Susanna pilot ignored the message, and another sent right after. An Exocet missile was released from 35 kilometers away, which hit the target, but failed to detonate. The crew did not respond with fire, because four of its radar detection systems failed to show they were being attacked. According to the investigation conducted afterward, quote, The attack was unprovoked and indiscriminate. Stark was and had been in international waters, well outside of the Iraqi and Iranian declared war zones. The undetonated missile hit the port side, and its rocket fuel caused a fire that took over the post office, storeroom, and the weapon-holding Critical Combat Operations Center. The pilot of the Iraqi plane withdrew, but not before shooting another more devastating missile from 24 kilometers away. The second missile also struck the port side, but left a hole of around 10 by 15 feet upon detonation. The ship's standard missile electronics were compromised, and Captain Brindle was unable to order an attack. An American airborne early warning and control aircraft witnessed the aircraft. The AWACS crew asked a nearby Saudi Arabian airbase to send an attack plane to intercept the Susanna, but the team at ground control did not have the authority to make such a call. The Susanna and its escorts left untouched. 37 crew members were lost in the attack. The gaping hole left on the USS Stark threatened to flood and sink the ship. In order to prevent that from happening, Captain Brindle had his men flood the hole on the hull's port side above the water to balance the ship. Two ships responded to the distress call dispatched from the frigate. The USS Waddle and USS Cunningham destroyers arrived at the scene to provide damage control and assist the crew. An Iranian helicopter and a Saudi Arabian ship also answered the call and assisted in the rescue mission. Captain should have ordered an attack under the United States Navy rules of engagement, and the USS Stark should not have received the first hit without fire. USS Stark traveled to Bahrain, arriving the next day on May 18th. Temporary repairs were conducted by the destroyer tender USS Acadia, an auxiliary ship, so that it could withstand the journey back to its home port at the Mayport Naval Station in Florida. Iraq's initial claims that the USS Stark had violated neutrality were dispelled when it was confirmed that the American vessel had been two miles away from the exclusion zone in international waters. An initial apology from Iraq had Saddam Hussein claiming that the pilot had mistaken the ship for an Iranian tanker. It is unknown whether these claims are based in fact and threatened to harm Iraqi-American relations, which were already strained due to the 1986 revelation that the U.S. had sold weapons to Iran during 1985 and 1986. However, diplomatic talks and the deeply entrenched political and military cooperation efforts between the two nations at the time prevented any escalation from taking place. Iran tried to use the incident to pressure Western forces from exiting the area, a mostly unsuccessful effort that backfired when both Iraq and the United States weaponized the event and placed blame on Iran. President Ronald Reagan even stated after the fact, quote, the villain in the piece is Iran. 
In May of 1997, President Reagan gave a eulogy for those fallen at Mayport Naval Station, and a subsequent ceremony is held each year to commemorate them in May. Iraq and the United States did not settle on compensation for the damage incurred to the crew of the USS Stark until 2011, when a $400 million fund was set up to compensate them, as well as the prisoners of war and hostages taken during the Persian Gulf War.